So this is the new Dragon Board. Hi, I'm Dave Mandela with Lenaro, and I'm uh, the director in working on 96 boards. And I'm here talking with uh, the Aero guys about the Dragon Board 410C. And I wanted to thank the Aero guys for being sponsors for Lenaro Connect this year because it's really we really really appreciate the sponsorship. With that, let me turn it over to the guys from Aero. All right, so my name is Glenn Carlson. Uh, I handle the open source uh, effort on behalf of Aero Electronics. And what, you're see, what you see here is the Dragon Board 410C. This is the first board that Aero Electronics has released into the 96 boards CE specification. Show on the back. So this is gonna be uh, available soon? Yeah, we expect to launch this one uh, in mass production in, in late Q4 time, time frame. All right, so what can people do? Can they pre-order already or? Yeah, you can go to arrow.com uh, and get your order in, uh, Dragon Board 410C. So, uh, and you have another one too. Yeah, in fact, we're, we're um, my name is Brian Shea. I'm a technical marketing manager at Aero Electronics. And this is the second board that we are working on. This is a Freescale i.mx6 uh, processor. It's based on that. That processor has, it's a dual core Cortex-A7 at one gigahertz. It also has on board a Cortex-M4 coprocessor running at 266 megahertz. There's and also Cortex-M4, so it's like heterogeneous a little bit? Correct, heterogeneous processing, yep. Um, it has, it's the CE specification 96 board, so it's got the complement of uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB, HDMI, and of course the low speed and high speed expansion connectors with MIPI DSI and MIPI CSI on there as well. So Arrows, uh, you, you provide the components for the whole in, for the whole world, right? We do, that is one piece of it, yes. And uh, this is towards the developers, uh, you're doing lots of stuff with that? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, for the sake of Lenaro, we wanted to get these in the developers' hands to really, uh, you know, develop the software on these boards. Uh, but we absolutely find, uh, we, th we think a lot of customers are going to be interested in these low-cost boards for their development purposes as well. Yeah, I mean, these are these are really neat. I'll jump in here for a minute because one of the cool things about the Dragon Board, and this future board, the first two boards that hit the market, Dragon Board was one of two, the first two, they're 64-bit machines. Right now, short of buying a very, very expensive development board from ARM itself, you can't really get your hands on early development silicon for 64-bit ARM. That's incredibly cool. Put it together with a low-speed I.O. with, with uh, GPIO, I2C, uh, and other, other bits in the high-speed high bus. This is just a really incredible piece of kit for doing development work. On top of that, part of the CE spec is that this power supply looks like just a normal power supply, but it's not. For folks like myself who never quite know what they're going to grab out of the toolkit to power the board up, this thing works from 6 volts to 18 volts. Just plug the right, get it into the hole, and the board will power up. That's really cool. And there's enough capacity on this board that I actually use a 12 volt supply, drive 5 volt relays, and drive 12 volt motors through the board, letting the power supply on the board deal with it. So that's really incredible for developers. And I'm going to be taking a demo setup to the New York uh, Maker World Maker Fair this coming weekend. And uh, I'll have that in, in the uh, Qualcomm booth showing that off. So I'm really excited about what this does for makers. I'm excited what it does for developers here at Lenaro. We can finally work on these things anywhere we want to, anywhere we need to. It hooks up and we can do our jobs. Without this level of quality of board, you know, it's very hard to do things. And then the other thing that makes me excited about this, this is a production quality board. Even though it's targeted at developers right now, this is high quality. You could put this once it passes all its FCC approvals, yada yada, but once it gets through all of that, you could put this into your own products with your own mezzanine cards to do your own things, whether it be a, a UAV, whether it be a rain sprinkler control system, whatever it may be, you can base your product off this board, put your own mezzanine card on it, and do things with it. And in a year's time or two years' time, when the more powerful chip comes out or maybe your product needs a boost, you can just get the next, the, the, the Qualcomm 810 chip or whatever it may be in the future, plug your mezzanine board onto it, and you haven't lost all that development effort. It just is going to keep working. That makes me tremendously excited it's as a developer. standard positions for all the connectors? Yep. The, the electrically, all the connectors and the pinouts are standardized, both on the low speed and the high speed. The USB, the USB on the go for flashing, 
uh, the HDMI, and, and everything is standard. So it'll continue to be in the same places in the future. Uh, these boards are identically sized. You can see all the critical connectors are located in exactly the same places. So this is a, an important piece. Now there is an extension to the CE standard and you can make the board a little bit bigger. Everything within the standard CE still has to be in the same place, but if you have more special things you want to add to a board, you can do that. So it's, to me, this is a chance where you as the vendor, here, I, today I need a 32-bit board. Well, when this is out on the market, I can get a 32-bit board. If I need 64-bit, I come to this board. In the future, if I need a 64-bit with some special DSP or some other kind of thing, I can look and see whose who's sock is on a 96 board that fits my need. That is tremendously cool in this industry. We haven't had that before. You could get the different boards, but then you had to redo everything you've done in the past. Quite frankly, that's not a lot of fun. I've, when I got to invest time in making a board, having to redo it to fit something else, that's just a bummer. You know, I don't know how many times this happened to me as a developer. I'm working on some board, I've put a, a daughter card on it, and they go end of life just as I'm about ready to try to make my product. In this case, if a board went end of life, I just pick up the next one that's replacing it, put it in, and I haven't lost my time. So this is this is what happening with 96 boards is. Uh is bringing the maker into the Linaro world. One of the areas world. is, yes, bringing makers into this. And that to me is a huge deal. I've been a maker for a very long time. I'm a member of the Dallas Makerspace, uh, one of the largest maker communities in the United States. Uh, we're uh, at almost a thousand people. And I'm excited to show this off to the Dallas folks and I'm excited to go to the World Maker Fair and show this off to makers. I think there's gonna be a lot of accelerated development based on the fact that these are available. It's like a 64-bit ARM uh, Arduino. In some ways, yes. And in fact, uh, we have a library, uh, Lib uh, uh, 96 Boards GPIO Lib. Uh, it's it's uh, designed to actually add calls that any Arduino programmer would recognize for running the GPIO. There's also Lib SOC, uh, met, uh, done by a gentleman out in um, the UK. And he's agreed to take patches to make that library, which takes care of GPIO and I squared C and other things to standardize that. He's agreed to take patches for 96 boards to standardize across the 96 board family. It'll still do all the stuff LibSock's done, but there'll be an option to turn on 96 boards and then all 96 boards would be smooth across the family. So I'm really excited that we're getting support from the community, we're getting support from the vendors, and we're getting, and, and getting interest from makers and others. But you guys, you know, what do you guys think of Makers? I mean, what, how, do, how do you see Makers as part of, you know, your uh, community buying things and so forth? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, the, the Makers, I think, are really the future of this industry to some extent, especially with boards like this coming out, uh, you know, at very aggressive price points. Uh, you can put these boards in a lot of people's hands and really, um, this thing will go as far as your imagination will allow. And we're really excited about that. We haven't really seen anything like this from the maker community. Uh, it's you know almost bursting into the upper echelon and that's very unique. So we're very excited about this. Um, you know The boards are, all, are one piece of it. Uh, the other piece is the, the rest of the ecosystem, the mezzanine cards, uh, the additional experience that we're gonna offer through, uh, you know, through the addition of, of sensor technology um, and, and all the things that are gonna plug into these boards and allow you to evaluate um, you yeah, know, a lot of different applications. So cool about Aero is you guys have a wide supply right. of sensors and other things, yeah. so I can buy the board, and eventually I'll be able to buy mezzanine cards, and then I'll buy sensors yeah. and other parts from you. Exactly. Because it's one-stop shopping. That's pretty cool stuff. Exactly. Right. Uh, do you think people are gonna soon be bringing out robots and drones and this is what's going to happen. It's going to be all kinds of stuff, right? Yep. I, oh, it absolutely. wouldn't surprise me a bit. We'll, we'll see mezzanine cards that address UAVs, that address robotics. Uh, I really believe it's all going to happen. It takes a little time. I mean, one of the key things is this board has an open source uh, GPU. It's the first board you can get your hands on at a reasonable price that has an open source GPU. It uses Freedrino. So this board is nearly 100% open source. Not quite. It does have a, a locked bootloader, but it is from after the bootloader, it's all open source. That is amazingly cool for folks in the open source community and for folks doing development work with specialized things like robotics and UAVs and things like that. Very, very cool stuff. This is something that uh, the open source world has been waiting for many years. For right? many, many years many in the years. ARM space and OpenGPU. 
That's a first. And they've always That's been closed, proprietary. It's a huge deal. It's not a big deal. It's huge. It's huge. I mean, you you working with the Canonical, right? I used to work at Canonical, one of my bugaboos. I was the guy who headed the team that ported Ubuntu to ARM. And one of our biggest headaches was, how do we deal with the closed source GPUs? How do we get a video acceleration without having to have million licenses signed for the vend for the end users? And it was really, really hard. How did you do this? Is it? We ended up uh, in cer certain boards, um, TI, for example, made it very made it very easy for, for uh, people to use their board. Other vendors, you had to go sign individually. You could buy a board, but you still had to go execute a license to use the video acceleration. So it varied across the board. But this board, you don't got to sign anything. You don't got to do anything. It's all in open source, and you can go get the free Drino. You can make modifications. You could use the GPU for math code processing if you want to. Now, I can't because I don't know how to do that, <laughs> but there are people who do know how to do it and, they, and you can get that done because it is open source. So you can use this thing for lots more than just even video acceleration. How's the performance running Ubuntu? You know, it's, it's surprisingly good. We still have some work to do getting uh, the, the, the load to work as well as we want. There are things that still need to go up, up uh, to, uh, in the main line but we're making significant inroads to it. Um, and once we get all the stuff in mainline, I think this thing will be really screaming. Even without everything where we want it, it's still a, a really powerful board. Nice. And there's gonna be a good price for these boards. I think the list price yeah. in this is yeah. 75, list, 75 The Dragon bucks? Board is $75. $75. $75. Yes. $75. Yes. For, Absolutely. Uh, for uh, 64 bit, quad core, 853. Gigabit, gigabyte of RAM, eight gigs of storage on board with GPS, uh, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth on board. So if you need GPS, if you need Wi-Fi, if you need Bluetooth, if you need storage, all of a sudden $75, that's a pretty inexpensive price for what you get on this. This thing is also set up, interestingly enough, it's got some switches here. And those switches enable different things, but one of the key things is it says where it boots from. So this is able to boot from internal EMMC flash, the eight gigs, or you can put a uh, micro SD in and boot from the micro SD, or you can switch back and forth depending on what you're doing. You could have um, you could have Android AS, AOSP on this on in internal, and you could have uh, Ubuntu on the flash, or vice versa. So you can work in different environments simply as what you want to boot and bring it up. So it's really neat that all that. And I also hear tell now this is a Linux thing, and I'm a heavily <laughs> dedicated Linux guy. I've been in open source for very many years, but I also hear Microsoft's interested in this board and they're gonna bring out some kind of build of Windows 10 for it. So I can't tell you how that'll work, but I'm kind of excited that a company like Microsoft who, you know, for years hasn't been in the embedded space very much, they're gonna bring out a build for this. That's neat stuff. They think 96 boards is cool too. You know, hey, I'm not, I'll personally not use it, but I'm glad it's available for other people. It was Microsoft keynote today. Yeah. At here at Linaro Connect. Isn't that neat? Microsoft has finally come around. <laughs> All right. First they laughed at us, now they're here talking to us. <laughs> and uh, so a year later, two years later, how do you really think it, it can be giant? The 96 I, boards. I think 96 boards can be huge. I think, you know, a couple of years from now, I, I, there's already, you know, a total probably of over nine boards in the pipeline today. I don't know how many there's going to be in a year, but there's going to be a lot. And, and it, the boards, the cool thing is, because they use different SOCs, this is, this is Qualcomm, and I'm excited by it. But each SOC vendor brings certain strengths with their SOC. TI has DSPs, they're known for that. Qualcomm is known for other features. Um, Freescale has a Freescale. M4 heterogeneous. Yeah, so, so each vendor brings their own sauce. The cool thing is, it really caters to what ARM is known for you can find a 96 board that's going to meet your need for your project, Absolutely. whether you need 64-bit, 32-bit, do you need a coprocessor, don't you need a coprocessor, all of this will be available. And then on top of that, you can take the mezzanine cards and they'll fit across the entire family. That's amazing. You know, other vendors have, have cards that have brought out different versions of the boards over time. They can't even use their early plugins to the later boards. This you'll be able to take these mezzanines and keep moving them around and using them. It's exciting. It's, for me, it's something I've fought for for years, talked to vendors for many years, and never had much luck. It took Lenaro 
and George, our CEO, to get the thing off the ground. But this is cool, and it's 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 a, it's a game changer in the, in this space. I really truly believe.